Hey, everybody! Uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to happen every time. Every time. Uh, welcome to another episode of Defense of the Patients. I'm your host, Cyphus. I'm sitting here with my co-host, Roland. Hey, everybody! Uh, yeah, no, I'm just going to get bigger and better with it, you know? Because uh, right. that's how, how things work. I'm going hey. to make, uh, make .p great again. Everybody needs know? something, okay? <laughs> everybody needs something. I'm glad I'll you have, found hey, your something. Yeah, I'll yeah. have late night talk show yeah. host. Hey. You just turn into the Hulk all of a sudden, dude? Yep. <laughs> So this episode is hella late, and uh, you're going, oh, well, why are you guys acknowledging that the episode's so late whenever it was supposed to be yeah, up earlier? And when you That's because uh, shit got fucked. Shit, <laughs> shit got fucked. Um, so, uh, I'll the, say it's my fault again. Yeah, that's all right. We're, we're set, so we thought we were moving studios. Uh, you guys know all the drama that happened there. We are, have been trying to restore the studio to its former glory. Yeah, there's still boxes and shit in here. and like From when we were packing up everything literally everything to move and we were yeah. using the basest of setups to record the show um and now we're trying to get everything back to how it was and, have and better yeah. quality on the recordings and, and the mac i mean this we've been using this mac now for uh almost two years um it's almost two years old i think i got the mac i got the we i we didn't have this mac when we first started yeah. we were using yeah. the laptop the mac air yeah um so that's two years of um when you record a file and before you bounce it down, these things are like each recording we do is in the gigabytes of of disk space. Yeah. And then so this computer is getting to the point where I need to do a clean wipe, take every uh, recording we've done, put it on external hard drives and kind of just clean the computer up. Yada, yada, yada. We fucked up. Now we have to re-record the episode. <laughs> yeah, um, it's fine. We, we you know, yeah, what, what, it was, it was good practice. And we missed, uh, we missed a couple things on the episode that I did want to go over, which yeah. is state of affairs. I feel like, okay, a, a, we've been kind of off the radar. Uh, That's it's, true. And so people may or may not want to hear what our MMRs are <laughs> right before we dissect the Manila Major. Yeah, we're gonna turn off a t- bunch of people by um, telling them the truth about our MMR. Yeah, well, when people, although I feel a lot better about it these days. Oh yeah, I feel a ton better about it. And uh, we made a comment last week on the Wednesday show that we are three K players. Um, and I'm, we got a lot of shit for that, we, and yeah. they're like, "Wow, you're really rounding up." I'm twenty nine fifty. So I'm not rounding up a bunch. Um, I'm 26 on my party, and I'm recalibrating. On so what we did, and I, I don't know that we even got into it on, when we did the fill-in on the Wednesday show. Uh, but forever ago, we you know we did the march to 3K madness, which failed miserably, and I, like it it got to me psychologically. I got to 24.75 was my peak during the march, and we were both starting from like a flat 2K. And then I, I, I no, I started in uh, eighteen eighty on that because I was yeah. I dropped well below two k because I was doing my jungle shenanigans yeah. and then I got into Spectre. Well, I I was starting from like a, basically a flat two k, climbed two hundred and fifty points in the first like six days, <clears throat> and then uh, and then just fell off just rapidly. And it was in the days of like Spectre plaguing the, the yeah the like plaguing the sub 2k or sub 3k pubs well yeah and my god like i specter's gone away uh, in a big way but i don't i don't think specter is that much weaker no not that much I, well and people figured out how to deal with it and it, admittedly like i was never playing a, a role where i was the one who was supposed to be dealing with specter uh, mm-hmm. which i think is kind of i think critical if you're going you well know, in 2k the best way to deal with Spectre is to win before it gets late. Right. Which, which is, is the hardest fucking which is the, thing yeah. in 2K you, to yeah. do. Yeah, like, I mean, I when when have you ever... I, I know that I can say I've been in a ton of 2K pub matches where I've just begged and pleaded with a team where I've mm-hmm. looked at the lineup, and it's super obvious. It's like, hey, you know what that you know what that other team did? They they picked four cores in a, in a fucking support, mm-hmm. and all four of their cores are super fucking late game. It's an anti-mage. It's a specter. Yeah. If we go to 55 minutes on this game, we're going to lose just by the sheer fact that they'll have inevitably because get you, Because something. you picked Axe, Tusk, Viper, and you know, right. and it's like, and, let's win at 20 minutes then, guys. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, we got to go quick. Yeah, like, let's Okay, no, we can't just keep farming. And we I, can't just... And I will say now that uh, I think my past like four matches have all been high skill um i'm i'm starting i'm it's i'm now 
According to Dota Buff, according to Yasp, I'm high. I'm a high skill player. Whatever the fuck, I don't. It doesn't feel that different. Where it does feel different is nobody's fighting over runes anymore. No one's like runes mine because I'm this hero. Like yeah, even, everybody has a pretty good assessment of who should get it. Or like even me when like I last night I jungled an ogre and it went really well because we need ogre was top of the list on Dota Picker. I I've been picking last or, or trying to pick last as much as possible. Um, not to, not so my Sven gets, doesn't get countered or anything, just so I see what everybody wants to do and that they're comfortable. And I'm comfortable enough with the game at this point that if I need to go Tidehunter or Void offlane, I can do Tidehunter or Void offlane. If I need to do a jungle something, I can jungle something. Uh, I'm sticking to real junglers now. Some would say Ogre isn't a real jungler. He, he's not in the essence of like, he stays in the jungle and comes out a badass, but he is in the essence that he can get level 4, level 5 pretty easily in the jungle, pop out, and then start ganking people with mana boots. Um, and I had an Aether Lens challenge, which I wanted to get my Aether Lens, <laughs> and I, I got it three yeah. stars. But um, that was a high skill game. It worked out really well. They What I'm noticing is the jungle's getting ganked. Um, I'm getting... And it's obvious um, because I'm, I'm warding as well. I was. I took the hard 5 position yeah. as Ogre Jungle. Um, and I put up wards uh i before you get too far on this path i just want to i want to solidify that what we ended up doing was going over and creating smurfs i I get that i I know the definition of a smurf everybody i I, yeah but trust me it's not my smurf anymore though like it's my main account we we started an alternate account to try to recalibrate and i i and i guess we could have a little bit of a discussion here about it but it's the whole process has made me think very differently than i did two years ago just getting into dota mm-hmm. or two and a half or whatever it's been um about yeah, two about two years yeah. uh, coming up on two years we've been playing dota um uh, i started about july yeah, i'd say and then sure. you started probably like july 15th yeah like maybe two weeks after i did so uh w- when i initially started you know we were we were doing the show with wazoo it was just a monday thursday run and we were super scared to be on mic and, <laughs> sure. and it was npr and but, wazoo was the authority at 2300 mr right. <laughs> yeah and, yeah it and was, so it was different wazoo he brought up the <laughs> the concept of trenching and uh you know i i have a a, a slight stats background. I, I, you have a, a pretty heavy math background. Maybe you didn't quite I took at the a stats time. Class. I mean, I took, I took, I didn't take uh, your SPSS psych stats or whatever you took, but I took a. Yeah, that's I one took element a, of it. <laughs> yeah, I took like a general uh, stats class yeah. and. But so, yeah. con- con- trying to contemplate it, my my initial argument was, uh, well, trenching shouldn't exist because. If you are better than everybody else at your skill level, and the odds are equal that you're going to get shit teammates versus good teammates for everybody, the good ones should climb. The the cream good should players, rise to the yeah, top the cream should eventually rise to the top. However you want to phrase yeah. it, mm-hmm. the good players should inevitably climb. As we got further along in it, and I really started thinking about like what that meant, and in a game where there are so many variables, and where I, I think at most you could argue. Any particular player is ten percent of the game, right? There are ten players in the game. Sure. You you are ten percent of the game. I would love to break it down. I'd love to talk to Nahaz about that and say, is mid only twenty percent of his team, or would you say mid is thirty well, percent? Or you can and safe lane I, is ten percent. Safe lane definitely carry, an over. You know? It's definitely an oversimplification. Yeah. But you know because yeah, that's a could, different tangent. Though. Right. You could try to break it down that yeah because well hey mid gets uh mid gets forty percent of the team's farm maybe mid you know or yeah. mid supposed to get thirty. 5% of the team's yeah. farm, whatever that breakdown is. But doing is. the simplification like Dendi did where he's like, don't cheer for me, I'm only 20%. Like, Dendi said that to the well, audience of Filipinos that were like, Dendi, Dendi, and he's like, guys, don't, thank you, but I'm only 20%, and he was super humble and nice. It's lucky that the only accent you can do is, is Russian, and he's got that uh, He's Eastern got this, it's, on, it's so. like, don't, don't yeah. vote, <laughs> I'm just 20%, I'm just um, 20%, but thank you. So, but another, another interesting way to look at it is, uh, I I have always had, throughout the my run of Dota, a a, 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 a win rate that was above fifty percent. You have as well. And for a while, I mean, for a while, I was under fifty percent. What I'm saying is, un, uh, over on your lifetime of games, I'm like fifty, you were over fifty one. You're, I think you're like fifty point five. But oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> on my on, main on account? your main on your on... I'm fifty seven percent on the other account. Right. Yeah. 
So and that's over 120 games, guys. So it's not just like I we didn't go in. I have yet to calibrate on real ranked. Right. Also, to, uh, let, so to another, add yeah, an, an another addendum. like another caveat, another yeah. addendum. We're do we're totally. Abusing, I'm not high enough level to do yeah, it yet. We're totally abusing the TI ranked on those accounts. Uh, but so that being said, if you want to take a, a let, let's take one of the best players in the world. We looked up Artizi's win rate, right? And it was like 57%. Yeah. Was his lifetime win rate. Which means over the course of 100 games, Artizi wins 14 games more than he loses. Mm-hmm. Right? If you want to average that he's gaining 25 MMR per run, he's getting about 350 MMR over the course of 100 games. Which is a lot of games. That's a lot of games. And, and that's high. Mm-hmm. Now you want to take your more average player. That's probably uh, your more casual player. Uh, you know, take give take, him a fifty-one percent well, win rate. It, I'm I'm a fifty-two okay. percent win rate. Okay, so on my on my old account, on my primary account, that most of the folks probably listen. To I'm the trying show, to think of anything Fafnir is going to save to you, so I can just say it first. So keep going. <laughs> no, I, I welcome uh, Faf is a is, is a math <laughs> I, fucking I he's an actuary. He, Jesus no, Christ, he's a master's in math. Now, when he told me that, I initially was like, okay, I, I'm I'm good with Faf. Like, he's a cool, he's a cool guy. <laughs> I, I look forward to like his. It's probably uh, why he's so nihilistic, though, dude. It's because he, he went through so many numbers. <laughs> yeah. So um, take my fifty two percent. That means I win over the course of a hundred games. I win four more than I lose. Uh huh. So I'm gaining a hundred MMR every hundred games. I have to get play on the ground, thousand, bro. I have to play a thousand <laughs> games to go up a thousand MMR. I where I supposing think, your win rate stays at fifty one percent throughout, and I, odds are that it will. I mean, there's a large enough sample there that it. it but your you sample know. is all within the same skill range. Sure. So my here's my argument. Here's mm-hmm. here's where I've started to believe that trenching or there is an element of trenching. I, I don't buy that it's fully there. I I could have ground out the games. I could have sat there and done it. It it would have been painful. I would have hated my life. I probably at times would have played worse and had a lower win rate because mm-hmm. uh, because of the grind. But if you are constantly, I, I'm also a believer in you rise to the level of your competition. When you, I, I genuinely feel like I wasn't. I never felt super outclassed. Every once in a while, it happens. It happens to everybody I know. Well, Tinker, but I never felt Tinker su- makes you feel outclassed, uh, even sure. though he's not necessarily outclassing you. Sometimes you're like <laughs> this fucking Tinker. It's but like, I, I, my point being, I never felt. I know. I, I never know felt Tinker. outclassed by when we would party with like Wazoo <laughs> and some of the the three K tier dot peers. You mean the eight K Mister Blue and well, AG4? Blue has twelve K MMR because he's got three K over like four accounts. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, they add up just <laughs> yeah. like that. Blue That's is like twelve K. Yeah, isn't Blue's he? like twelve K. It's better yeah. than miracle. Yeah. Um, no, I love you, Blue. Uh, but so my my whole thinking was, uh, <laughs> God damn it, you derailed me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, no, but I never felt outclassed by like my com- my adversaries in the same role on the other team. I never felt super outclassed by the enemy supports, which is what I was primarily playing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, two years later, I recognize that one playing support and grinding as a support is a painful fucking process. It it's something that it, it deters MMR gain. It really does because if you're playing a role. I'll do it if Anders if, or if Wazoo and you are both on cores. Uh, I'll yeah. Definitely oh, I never mind. Or... Su- I never mind supporting Wazoo. I, I I generally recognize that like if I can if I can support Wazoo properly, odds are we'll he's win. gonna yeah. he's gonna carry the game. Yeah. Um. He you know I know that but he's got good farming solo patterns. I know that. Yeah. And solo, yeah, it's roll the dice. I mean, sometimes I you will get do people it. Sometimes that... I will do it. Sometimes, but I like to play like Venji or. I don't know. Sometimes, like, even Ogre to a certain degree. Like, once I get that Ags on Ogre, um, I feel like I'm kind of getting... Not, like, I'm not going to carry the game, but I can have huge impact on the game. Yeah. Same with Venji. If, like, okay, my carry sucks. I've done everything I can. I'm going to go get as much farm as I can because nobody's mid right now. I'll take the mid farm, and I'll buy a Deso. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now, now, yeah, I'm still buying wards and whatever, but I'm Venji with a Deso. You know, I, right. I like to play those types of supports. Sure, and, and you know, and I, I, yeah. I would frequently do that with Silencer. I'd say and Abaddon, they were the two that yeah. I kind of I played in that position. Where you can just like, okay, dude, transition, hurry, hurry, yeah. transition. <laughs> Where or I mean, sometimes I would play Silencer or Abaddon, get into the game, look, watch my my two K carry, walk over and start auto attacking creeps and never get a fucking last hit, and I go, well. <laughs> yeah. it's time to change things up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know you would you could know pretty quickly and, and start trying to transition and do a little bit of damage control but 
That being said, it's a way bigger, and I, I, I don't think that some of our higher skill listeners that listen to the show understand can probably fully appreciate what a roll yeah. of the dice it is, even if you do understand some of these things, because I played with better players. I played with players who understood things, who understood concepts such as creep equilibrium and stacking camps and these good habits that a better tier, better tier players are taking advantage of. Mm-hmm. And even though I could bring those those habits back to that 2K level in my solo, it didn't necessarily mean that the rest of my team was going to capitalize on it, understand it, or even care. Mm-hmm. And it would it would generate this like sense of frustration where. I would try to explain something, be told that I'm a jack-off by some asshole in a random fucking pub who's playing his two games of Dota, you know, for the month right now, or, and what the, what the fuck do my, what the, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Mute. You know, yeah, well, but again, I still believe in muting as a last resort. I still believe that, that communication in a game of communication, a game that requires communication. It really does require communication to be good. I guess I feel less so that it requires communication when I'm playing it like to uh, like a little under 3k and I'm Sven and I and I'm I mean my at this point I played Sven 60 times I think on my Smurf. I get farm. I don't need like, sure, I, I can look at the mini map. There's an element of that, but again, you know, I think about the fact that like I I traditionally wasn't playing in, until v- the bitter end on those accounts. I wasn't trying to vie for the carry spot. I was playing an off lane or a support role more likely. I was playing a mid role more likely. Um, you know, those are the types of things that I was trying to get into. Not really vying necessarily for that carry position. Yeah. So I Wazoo came in and left. Sorry for the squeaky <laughs> yeah. door. We're getting the studio back up and running. Yeah, Blackheart, well, we made, Blackheart this, made us a sign. Yeah, we, we got to put it back on the door. Yeah, we need to put it back on the door. Uh, but anyway, I, so the I, I guess I, what I'm trying to say, long story short, I do think there are some elements of trenching that that can impact you. I, I do think I that it's possible that you can be, and, and not only that, I think you can be playing above that skill level. I'm not. I hate to bring this up, dude, and I'm really sorry, but the Broodmother game that you played, the Broodmother game was painful. I mean, like that's that's your idea of trenching. Where I mean, I'm at se- above 700 GPM XPM yeah. on Sven. We still lose because you picked a brood into a very bad situation. And yeah, I know. And I'm not. I'm which not, is uncharacteristic, but it, I. I yeah. I'm just I'm not bringing this up to like you suck at Broodmother or anything. Sure. It was just a bad Broodmother game. Yeah, and absolutely. Even though I was doing everything I could on Sven, and was, oh, there was not much that could be done. There, I, I, you would have been better off <clears throat> if I had just sat in the fountain. I don't mean to be a dick, but probably <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. because and you were feeding spiders too, which was tough. And like that lane, oh, yeah. it was it was tough. Um, and that's I, and that's an the element of side, that I agree with. On the flip side, I will say that I also don't feel like the team capitalized on the space that i created you weren't creating that much space dude i'll be honest <coughs> yeah, uh, early early on i was well i got i got the i got your space i got 700 gpm 700 xpm but what, what it came down to is it was me the only core it was a one core lineup it was sven yeah and then Broodmother and crystal maiden and lich and i don't even know who our random fifth guy yeah, was. yeah. not a not a carry not yeah. even the late game carry and so i'd go into the fights maybe i'd take two or three down but i'd die and then Two of them yeah. were enough to rip through us. It, well, and we had the Tinker split pushing us the entire time. I, you know, yeah. And that Tinker, I, I mean, I got a Lotus Orb and a Lincoln Sphere for him, right. and and wrecked him. I'm not. I, <laughs> I don't think times. that's a great example of trenching. <laughs> no, but, but that that is exactly it. But where it's yes, like, that I'm type doing of situation. My fucking sure. best, and there is somebody that is just. And I'm just using you as an example because yeah, it was the sure. most recent that sure. I've had, and I've only no, no, been playing. No, yeah, I know. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not Thanks. trying to make Thanks, you but... seem. I <laughs> hey, I've I've had those. I'm just fucking games. with you. No, it was a terrible. It was one of those situations where I was how many games? Look, of... it was a fucking normal game. I was looking at that fucking counter picker list, and it was a normal. And game. all of a sudden, ranked. fucking brood popped up, and I was like, you That'd know, be fun. Oh yeah, fuck, brood I'll is play fun. Brood, brood is a blast. Yeah, she's a blast to play. I was like, I'll have some fun, and it was fun for about three and a half minutes. Yeah. Um. Until they rotated and, that team. And well, I'm, I'm a strong believer of Brood uh, should be left alone for the first 10 minutes, take that tier one, and then everybody should go with Brood in that lane and just say, okay, we're all in to win I, by on, 25 minutes. On the minutes. flip side, I, I, I think it's really easy for people to do it whenever it's an axe that's causing a ruckus up in the, to- up in the off lane, and they're less likely to do it whenever it's a Brood. Axe and Brood both do kind of the same thing in that they can cause a lot of chaos at our level. Banging and, on pots and pans. Yeah, and it forces a huge rotation out from the team. And I, I, I see it happen all the fucking time. 
uh, and I, I don't really play Axe that often, but I'll see an Axe up there. Uh, I know it keeps saying up because I'm always, I'm always in the radiant in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll see an Axe in the off lane and he's wrecking their safe lane and they, I'll see them rotating, you know, three, four, maybe the full fucking team up there to try to deal with this Axe. And I'll look at all the free fucking space that we have and yeah, we'll have and a carry some farming. guys like picking his nose in the jungle. Yeah, taking and it's a small like, camp. hey, yeah. they're all up there. Let's grab two towers. Even if they get our off lane tower, let's be two fucking towers ahead while they've got five people dealing with one solitary hero. And the problem was, and you um, can't get people to rally. Well, no, the problem with your with the Broodmother game, if we're going to use this as an example, is the Tinker got extremely fed. Yes, and then he was de- he just de pushed me every time. He killed all the creeps. Yeah, and so yeah, I could kill that Tinker. But he was super elusive. No, and had I just even thought about it for we should have just gave him had no I even option just and just thought about it for ten lane. seconds. Yeah, and, but I, had I just thought about it for even ten seconds, I wouldn't have picked that brood mother into the tinker. Well, yeah, it's a miserable time. I just saw her pop up on the counter picker, and I just went with it. Yeah, um, and I'm sure once Tinker was added to that, she dropped to like I'm sure last place because I know sure. Tinker's a plus ten against yeah. uh, like a ten percent advantage. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, pretty pretty evident. Yeah, pretty, pretty one-sided. Quick. But when when you were like, push, push! Well, the Tinker was coming to his off lane, and then just marching machines, marching machines, and I didn't have creeps. And even though I'm a yeah. badass Sven that has Echo, Blink, Dom, Treads, my whole kit by, you know, 16, 17 minutes, um, I can't push a tower with no creeps. I can't backdoor it this yeah. early, dude. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And so that's why you just have to kind of force the... The tinker to come top over and over and over and over and over to try and de push you yeah. to the point where you kill him and then you can take a tower. Regardless, and, I don't yeah. want to get into a tinker, <clears throat> but no. I don't, I don't, but trenching. I want to keep his focus. So yeah, no. First, I, my, I do believe I that there's that element. It. I want to talk about trenching. My experience of it. Oh sure. It because I mean, for the longest time when I was playing on my what I now call my Smurf, which was my main account. <laughs> sure. Uh, that is an account that I will never play dota on again maybe i will i mean I, i'll never I, I still plan to i don't give a shit about I, that that's account. where most of the guildies like i have like i don't want to go through the painstaking process of like re-adding everybody and sifting through friend invites to figure out who's who i i'm gonna get I, like, i'll probably I'll log on still to that log account. on there to play with people because it's fun and for the in-houses i'll log on to that account for yeah. instance and and make sure like i help and i'll play on that account for in-houses but as far as like trying to climb on that account it's it's i'm not gonna yeah go through these the are becoming our serious dota accounts, i'm our try hard accounts. i'm playing really well i mean i have uh high skill um yasp estimates me at 33 uh which is cool like i don't i don't give a shit about that i give a shit about what i am um was about to break 3k last night for the first time i am the highest no i was the highest mmr i've ever been last night at 29 60 something and then we lost um, so I'm back down to like 2940 or something like that, but, yeah. um, it's just more, it's more fun. Um, I feel like there's more respect, uh, uh, maybe not like verbally there's more respect it, for the game. It, it's yeah. It, well, it's, it, you know, again, it's just that, that understanding that unfortunately, you know, even 500 points of MMR makes like, you don't get, in, you don't get fifth pick PAs is what I'm getting at. Like you don't have like a, a tiny mid and then. You know, a juggernaut safe lane, and then you already have a tide hunter off lane, and then fifth pick is Phantom Assassin. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? We needed a support. Yeah, we like need, you know. we didn't need a PA, and now we're gonna like, you know, we'll win late game, but we're gonna get owned yeah. early game now. Like, uh, you don't see that as much, and that's or at least if you do have the guy who's the me mid, <laughs> the me carry, the me whatever. Let them take it is what I say. Yeah, well, I don't even argue for position. They feel fewer and further between, and I know because I, I know what I'm gonna. I know what the response we're gonna get on Twitter is. Everybody's gonna say, "Oh, it's like that at every level." Oh, it's that at every level. Not you my get that experience. I played and, at one k, two k, and now th- our, all of our averages are above three k when I play with Andrew. Um, yeah. wa- he's he's a hundred MMR ahead of me, so I'm within a hundred of Wazoo, which I'm sure kills him deep down inside there, all the time and i'm getting closer too because he plays with other people and loses and i only play with him and we win yeah. so uh and i play with you sometimes on the party yeah. but less so lately um we have like a 68 percent win rate together on yeah those oh Smurfs. wazoo and i have like a 82 percent win rate or something like that um over a lot of games too i want you to know for international ranked i didn't i didn't calibrate at 2900 i calibrated at 2710 so yeah. I've climbed 240 points on the party. 
on the party. Yeah. What uh, is your solo at? I I calibrated at twenty six thirty three, and I'm br- br- about to break twenty seven hundred. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping to calibrate. I'm not right playing around nearly there. as I'm not playing. Yeah. I, well, you got to get forty games into. I have I ha- I'm at thirty seven games on party. Um, about to hit my forty game, which is cool that. Like over those forty games, not only have I placed in my first ten games, but I've climbed two hundred points. Yeah, two hundred and fifty points. Almost. Are you gonna recalibrate with the regular MMR? Yeah. When oh you yeah. Have a chance. Just to well, say. I'm not level fifty yet. Yeah. So not I haven't yet. even. I'm level. We're like level thirty. I'm level thirty nine, I think, on my experience trophy. Yeah. And so your experience trophy has to be level fifty before you can do the regular ranked. And I'll do that again. Um, Just to see why not. Well, if, and if if. If my invisible MMR is somewhere around 3K, I imagine I'll probably place somewhere around where my yeah, international God, ranked knows. is. Even if I don't, whatever, I'll I'll keep what I have from international ranked. I don't feel like I've done any loopholes or anything. No, I feel I, like I got better I don't at the either. game. Yeah. I got better at the game, and I got off an account where my invisible MMR was so sacked. It's it's kind of like the saying with, uh, with typing. Uh, you know, you make one mistake, it takes 100 right strokes to cre- to fix that one wrong stroke. Well, that's kind of how my invisible MMR is on my uh, main, is that I've done so much stupid shit on that main account. So many t- dumb jungle strats, the Meepos <laughs> that I've picked, uh, the million Broodmother games that I have that went exactly like your Broodmother yeah. game went, yeah. um, that I feel like uh, their invisible MMR system is like, yeah, this guy is around 2k. Like, look at, look at all the data we have for this guy. Yeah. He's 2k. <laughs> Whereas... Over the 114 or 120 games, somewhere around 120 games on my uh, main account now, um, and it is my main account. I bought a Mortal Gardens. I <laughs> yeah. I have I, I spent probably 70 dollars on my Sven um, through on getting all the items for my Sven. I have the Rhino Sven um, mixed with the the shield, and then this. The yeah, cool you've invested sword. in this account. You're not leaving this. account. I'm not leaving this soon. account. Yeah, I have a Mortal Gardens on both accounts, which is stupid. But I, but. you know, I. I, Again, I, I like the. I, I, but trenching I like exists. that we went over there and um, did that. And I like that we started up the alternate accounts that we we kind of took on that experiment, because yeah, I, it was the it, my first solo calibration game was a high skill. Mm-hmm. That's the first high skill game I've ever had. Yeah, and now every, like I've I, like I said the last like uh, it's and Wazoo and I are checking it like Hawks and we're like oh my god um, we're beating four point five k's. I mean, I I went mid against the Tinker as Tiny, and he was four point five k solo, and I wrecked him. And I don't even play that much Tiny, so I don't know what that has to say. And I, and Wazoo the whole time was like, "Why the fuck are you picking Tiny? Why the fuck are you picking Tiny? Why the fuck are you picking Tiny?" And um, you were like, "I have no idea." The no, <laughs> I I I didn't no. have any idea. The Dota picker. I mean, oh, I okay. yeah, I was using Dota picker, and it's like. It's like tiny, 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 and we needed a mid. And I was thinking, okay, so this Tinker is going to laser me a whole bunch of times. I'll just farm with Avalanche and toss um, and do my best. The Tinker was super fucking cocky, which was awesome. Because he'd walk into me, and I'd Avalanche, toss, kill him. So I got first blood on the Tinker, then another kill on the Tinker, to the point where Tinker abandoned mid. And I just had mid free farm. And we annihilated this game. Um, and yeah, I went mid against the 4.5k Tinker and beat him on a hero I don't even play that often, Tiny. Which really made me think, like, you know, maybe I'm not that 2.2k player that I built myself <laughs> up to be. Maybe yeah. I'm a little bit higher skilled. Maybe I, yeah, you that, know. that's all I just wanted to see was I, I just, and so far the recalibration has been reaffirming that for me. That, but like, I, I'm still a new, I didn't like, think, yeah, like, I didn't go into this expecting that I was gonna, you know, be oh, 5k I, MMR when I recalibrated. I, I and it, Wazoo, Wazoo keeps talking about the 4k dream and like, let's get 4k, and I'm like, ah, I'm keeping, I'm optimistic that I'll continue to climb, but I'm happy just to be. With every game that I play I, being the highest MMR right. I've ever been. Yeah, I'm I I'm more than anything just looking forward to being able to learn the game at a new at a new skill tier. Mm-hmm. That that's all I'm looking for is if we're if I'm being honest, like what I enjoy about Dota is the same as I enjoy about at any other competitive game. I like learning with it. I like getting better with it. I like improving. Yeah, it, it's a it's a fun time. And of course, everybody likes winning. I'm not gonna lie; like I love oh, it's, to win. It's, it's oh, especially when you jump on to Dota buff right after and you see that that Tinker was 4.5k and it was a high skill <laughs> game, and you went like seven and one as Tiny, and Wazoo went like 
eight and two as Jug, and we just both were we were so just in sync. Awazu and I. He would TP to me when I needed help. I would TP to him when he needed help. That's a big thing you see in three K. Yeah, as rotations. I was gonna say. Oh man, yeah. like I didn't even have to call it out, and people like the Tinker would be chasing me, and all he needed was. And he was bottling up to get that last rocket off that would have finished me off. And all of a sudden, there's a lion mid and suns him. And I get away. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that would have put me yeah, down. Yeah, there, there are little things like, because I, you know, again, I playing playing with Wazoo, playing with the higher skilled players, you start to pay more attention to the rest of the map. That's another big difference between mm-hmm. that 2K and sub 2K area. You know, like you, it, it, and we're talking about the early 2Ks. And sub 2K areas. Yeah. People aren't paying attention to the map. Like, it, it's actually kind of painful. The The worst hero to see played at, like, the two, 2K level is fucking AA. Yeah. Uh, see, seeing global true. ults that should have gone off but don't, and then seeing where they actually do go off, and how many of them use it as more... Like, you can tell that they've got the camera centered on their hero, or near centered on their hero, because and all their ults... they willy-nilly. Well, because the ults go off in like yeah well either they're terribly aimed and may, maybe they're looking in the right area but I, I think more often than not what they're doing is using it as a finite ult within the area that they have visible on their screen and and those are extremely hard to land on yeah and i don't screen. i don't think people get that like it well the longer it's not even, it goes the bigger yeah, it's, of an it's, area there's yeah. so much more efficacy and it's there's so much more <laughs> efficacy just in your ability to participate in a team fight playing mm-hmm. that hero I, th- that's oh, one of those yeah. heroes that's painful to see io picks are always fucking awful uh silencers other silencers they aren't paying they aren't fucking paying attention you'll never get a a clutch silence from a 2k silencer across the fucking map i mean you you can and you still see this um i mean there's not a huge skill difference between uh like 20 22 i think there's 29 i i I will argue there's a pretty drastic it feels like you're taking one step up the stairs uh and 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 that step is okay i know that i'm not gonna fuck with your last hits if you're sven I'm going to support you, and when you don't need me in lane, I'm going to leave into the jungle and go do my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to double pull. I'm going to stack camps for you. Um, The next thing is... Which is what, by the way, I think you should be doing with Ogre. To kind of <laughs> well, to... I've I've got to kill things in order yeah. to level up. Uh, but yeah, um, it's like the camps that I can't take, like uh, some hard camps. Well, I just mean like I I think you could be quote unquote jungling ogre and instead just be playing him like a normal like tri-lane support just dip into the jungle i you know but I mean. when i pop out of the jungle i'm the same level as a dual lane so i'm i'm he's a, he's a very efficient jungler uh you yeah i'm just you, I, you do a one 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 with him and you just bloodlust i think you could have more success anyway this is a tangent for another a discussion yeah. for another day anyway um, um dota's been treating me good uh dota's been treating everybody good you guys i i really want to say we are really lucky to be playing this game right now 95 of 111 heroes were yeah. picked at the major um we stayed up till damn near seven in the morning yeah uh watching the manila brutal. major um it was an incredible experience watching uh the grand finals and how fly masterminded it but where are we on time on this thing uh, time to talk about manila majors yeah, is oh, where is we're at. Oh, yeah. Um, like we're, we're getting late in the show yeah we're, I mean, we're, we're, at, we're halfway and I, I have a lot to i have a lot to say okay. i mean i feel like there are a few highlights one let we we can discuss it but the the biggest highlight is Void Phoenix. <laughs> I think that is sure. the biggest highlight. You, well, undoubtedly. you can sum up OG Liquid in 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 those terms. in those two picks. Yeah, uh, Void Faceless, and even in the ban in Game Three right. on the Void. Um, the ban in Game Three on the Void op- I opened mean, the Elder Titan up. It and, just it. Yeah, Void Phoenix from Game Two on was psychologically fucking with. Which Liquid, I bet I Blue like. is like goddamn tickled pink. The Elder Titan. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Crit's his favorite player, you know? Cause, yeah. Because Crit is an awesome Elder Titan. And I've been playing with some Elder Titans. Like, I'm seeing more. Yeah, oh, I'm of seeing, course. I'm seeing... I saw an Earth Spirit, and I was really pissed off, and I was kind of a dick. And I I mean, I don't really feel bad for being a dick, but uh, he he was like uh, a me mid, uh, and it was like, okay. And he's like going over Quath and going over Tinker, and I'm like, okay, those are good, those are good. Then locks Earth Spirit, and I'm like, okay he's not a mid is what i'm thinking i'm like i'm thinking that earth spirit is probably gonna be like a four you know like he's your utility he's gonna like he's gonna silence a bunch of people he's gonna stun some people he's gonna roll in he's gonna initiate 
Um, the guy ended up being really good at Earth Spirit, and he was he was 4K solo, and he plays only Earth Spirit, and it was really impressive. But I took the rune from him because I was like, I'm not gonna let some Earth Spirit mid <laughs> take the rune from me when I'm on Sven. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I got it from him, and he pinged me, and he's like, "You douche!" And then he ended up doing really well, and we won the game. Um, with that being said, it's cool. That's another aspect, and I'll stop talking about this. I know I just tangentialized away from. Uh, the, well, no, the I think you're right. It's, it's just it's funny to start seeing. You know, it's one of the things we noticed when we first got into the game. All the uh, yeah, Ti4 liking, liking was all the rage. Van liking, Van liking, and every time we played a captain's mode game, mm-hmm. some asshole was up there making sure we banned out the liking right the fuck yeah. away. And, and you're and right, it, like they didn't. They didn't matter. Then. Yeah, people didn't understand why liking was being banned, why liking was being picked. Um, and you, you, you're always going to see that pro meta kind of bleed down. I think the beauty of this particular tournament is it's going to be hard to have pro meta bleed down. Yeah. Like, it's it's yes, not like an OD. I mean, you see Slark, like, I feel like, and I know we're in 6.88 now, but Slark has been the biggest, uh, hero in my opinion that we've seen. Like the, the one hero that everybody nominates for ban. Um, if he's picked, we're, we're picking Timbersaw. Well, because he's a good pub stomper. Um, he as just well. well he's he, not just good at the pro level. He's also good. He's running around solo in a pub. He's game. not that good at the pro level because people can just isolate him. And also, Sven we is saw, what I noticed. We saw a decent number we, of Slark and we picks, saw a so. decent number of Sven. But did you see how OG dealt with Sven and how Liquid yeah. dealt with Sven? They just didn't fight him. They well, were they like, kite him. Yeah, yeah, they just and their kite was just so good where it's like he's god strength and well, yeah. that's why you see those those death prophet pickups and that's why you you know yeah I mean yeah. and and death prophet uh, rest in peace but um yeah. I mean she got a huge nerf to siphon, I but, but I, I it was kind of a beautiful thing and yeah I, you know we we have the benefit of now because and so of the, what the, the pro- second recording yeah. here we get to know that six eight eight com- you know and the first recording it. we did was six eight seven it's definitely a balance patch there's nothing big except for like i feel like pudge is one of the bigger ones and, and the pudge Phoenix. is big for the sake of pubs yeah not for pro meta i mean i'm talking like now i'm gonna see pudge even more and now he's gonna be dismembering me even more and and now he's gonna slow me even more with his stupid fucking yeah. rock we're gonna you know thanks valve now i see pudge more now we see pudge in 70 percent of our pubs yeah. instead of 60 percent i that one that one kind of didn't make much sense to me. I feel like Pudge is doing fine since Aether Lens and X. Yeah, Pubs, P- Pudge has had, not had a problem lately. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's doing what he always does, sucking at pro level and being awesome in a and fucking pub match. I want to say that he was one of the heroes that wasn't picked yeah. at Manila, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can't I, remember that list. I know like Storm Spirit's on that list. I know that... I know that... Lena, I think, CK, was on that list, which was super Lena, surprising. Lena, CK... Um, Arc Warden definitely. I'm just gonna. Arc Warden's not in Captain's mode. Oh, okay. Well, they're Arc saying. Arc Warden definitely. Well, they're pick. saying of 111. Then, yeah, so it's I really mean... of 110. So, yeah. um, yeah, no shit. Arc Warden. <laughs> it's, it's, it's impossible. It's against the Monopoly rules. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was the cool thing is, is if the pro meta does bleed down, you're just bleeding down 95 of the heroes in the hero pool. Right. So what does it matter? Yeah. Like that's the game is so goddamn balanced that. I mean, oh, that- in the very last game of the Manila Majors, Grand Finals Game Fucking Four, we see a new hero. Yeah, Big Daddy No, unfortunately, no Wraith King. Unfortunately, we're gonna see people fucking last picking a. Or, what, what we're gonna see people pick Wraith King, and there's gonna be an anti mage, and there's gonna be a lion on the other goddamn team. That happened last and night. That's gonna happen in all that game. The fucking and time. And we we wrecked. That happened last night to Wazoo and I, where this guy's like, he was asking for last pick, and I said. Dude, they already have three cores. They're not going to pick an anti-mage. Like, I don't know what you're scared of. Pick Wraith King. And he's like, well, they're going to pick PL or something like that and get a defusal. He picks the Wraith King. Sure enough, they pick the anti-mage and oh. did a four core. And we wrecked them still. It didn't even yeah. matter. Because um, I wanted to really get that fifth pick to really fill out the team. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got the best pick I could get, which happened to be that ogre, um, in order to do it. And so... It worked yeah. out in the end. If Ogre was looking good, you probably should have fourth picked him and let him last pick the uh, the Wraith. Probably, but um, Ogre wasn't looking good until they fifth picked the Wraith or the Anti Mage, and then it was like g- he jumped up big time. It was um, it was either going to be an Ogre or it was going to be um, an Enigma. Mm-hmm. So it was it was I was like ah, I mean I either of those you're not going to be dissatisfied with. I guess is my. Point. I'm glad I didn't have Enigma because Enigma. I mean, it's he's Enigma would have been great for the lockdown on the AM so was ogre especially when i had my ags i yeah. he was he, I, died, he would die 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd, in some cases, I'd rather have the Enigma. And the cool thing but is, I, is, is on the Dota picker, I'm, I'm now putting it on high skill. Because uh, it's a it's a pick between sure. very high, yeah. high, and normal. Sure. And it does drastically change things. And I do notice that the the number one pick in normal skill was uh, uh, not even Enigma or Ogre. It was some. It was like Crystal Maiden or something like that. Which Crystal Maiden was banned, and I wanted to pick Crystal Maiden because Crystal Maiden is just so goddamn good. Uh, yeah. Period. And she got and then, eight, six eight eight. Yeah, and and she's and she would have been great against anti mage. Okay, I'm gonna get us back on track because yeah. we're gonna try to wrap this up. <clears throat> next thing, next thing on the docket to discuss was, and that, why I'm gonna, pre- I'm gonna try to preface this by apologizing initially to everybody who might be offended by comments that we're about to make. That cosplay contest was so fucking cringe worthy in my mind. That it wasn't just I, your mind. It was me, you, and Wazoo. You guys kept turning it off and wanted to play Rocket League. Oh, and I was like, and, that would, and would I, I put my foot down. Better usage of our time. Tell sir. me I put my foot down. Yes. And I oh, said, yes. we are Dota 2 <laughs> content creators. We need to watch what other content creators are doing. Um, the the only reason it was cringeworthy wasn't because of the cosplay. The cosplay itself <laughs> no, was... No, the costumes, the cosplay, Best cosplay I've ever yeah, seen. At, hands, hands down. down. You can't... Oh, yeah. I don't know how they did it. I don't know uh, the work that went in, the money that went in. Obviously, the Tinker set, which won, was amazing. I don't the, even think the paycheck that he got, by the way, which was like five grand, I think was first place, it, it was oh, enough yeah. to cover I'm his, sure it wasn't. Uh, it was enough to co- cover <laughs> That doesn't sound suit. right to me. Yeah. That thing looks beautiful. Oh, and uh, it the, was. The it was clockwork so was super done. fucking cool. That, Did, first that clockwork one. didn't win anything. Yeah. Which boggles my noggin. The first Doom was super fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, all, all of it was <clears throat> was really impressive. I the the cringeworthiness was Toby being the luckiest man on earth with the three girls in bikinis. <laughs> it was like, eh. no, yeah. it wasn't. No, that was that wasn't it. It was the it was how long we had to watch the cosplay because you know what when I like. When I see a photo of a cosplayer, when we were like at TI, when we were at ESO one, oh, I take pictures and I talk <laughs> right. to them, yeah. But you you snap a photo, you chat them up, and you move on. And I'm not saying that they're not people that are worth talking to. I'm just saying like they're there to like get a bunch of photos in with a lot of different people. They're there for you to be something to look at. Like I don't need a runway strut with the with sound instant, effects and with an instant replay and yeah with a slowed down instant replay it was the it was the sound effects I, i'll be honest that was actually fresh it. meat and then the pudge uh, uh, i didn't uh, want to hear uh, or even the uh, ultra the the when the dusa walked down oh, and she yeah. was there. ultra kill mega kill rampage and it was like yeah i i, I just oh my yeah, brain no, for, is still boggled thinking about for it like, people who thought it was a great that's idea? gonna turn people off um and i hate to say it, and i'm sorry you like the cosplay is awesome but the only people that get that are the people that play the game so and the only people that are watching are probably the people that play the sure. game sure but I, if we I get want that. to, but I, 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 yeah, my, here, my, my whole thing is like, and I, I don't know who made the comment it may have been me, but like, it's why we're not on ESPN. <laughs> like there's that kind of shit is, is it's what, just not acceptable. it's what the general public fucking sees and they go, Oh my God. Well, imagine this. I'll, I'll make, <laughs> I'll make, I'm the, I'm known for terrible analogy. And it's the same, by the way, this is the same way. Not even quite the same way. In fact, I respect cosplayers a little bit more. I respect cosplayers in general a lot more because of the time that they devote to like actually developing these costumes and, and their them. their cool recreations. Mm-hmm. But it, it had kind of it had this weird mixture element of like people who face paint at like sporting events, you know, yeah. or the guys who who are sitting there with the shirts off, you know, with Go Phillies written on their on their yeah, fucking. Could you imagine beer a gut. panel where it's like, yeah, the that was the best. Yeah, Go like Phillies. that. Yeah, that was the you know best what I mean. Like that's what that it is semi reminiscent kind of, of that. Of but it's a lot real. more work than just painting right. that. Oh yeah, absolutely, and um, more skill. Yeah, uh, hands down, more skill. But and again, it wasn't the cosplayers themselves, not the issue. The cringy sound effects, the the runway walk that felt like it lasted and way too fucking long, panel. followed by the follow-up. The panel. And then the panel. And because that panel, you had Toby with three chicks who were who were all in great cosplay themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, a the, Crystal Maiden, a Phantom Lancer. Yeah, and, and I uh, know they're Klopp. all three cosplayers. Like, I'm sorry I'm not huge in the cosplay scene, and I don't remember all the cosplayers that are out there, and we've met a lot of them, <clears throat> and are good friends with some of them. Well, I mean, I won't say good friends, we don't know them personally, but... They're friends of the show, Ashney Christ Bunny, all of those guys. I mean, we've ran into Ashley Christ everywhere we've gone. Yeah, and and they're they're super super cool people, and mm-hmm. I 
uh, I would love to have them all on the show again, and I'd love to have uh, see what their thoughts were about the cosplay contest and have an actual dialogue about it. But the panel wasn't doing that. I mean, at one point, and, and I told you, like, I don't envy Toby in this position because he's got three people up there who he's trying. It, it's hard to have a panel discuss cosplay. And at one point he asks them, he's like, so which Doom did you like better? And nobody can say because we can't hurt feelings. Well, the first Doom was shinier <laughs> and the, the second yeah, they were Doom like, oh, was, was more, more matte. Yeah. And then, I, I, they're just different. And it's like, tell me, the we all saw the Dooms. The first I would, Doom was I would cooler. love to hear an expert cosplay panel talk about what is the best cosplay and what is well, the worst cosplay. Well, or have them get into it. Like, if we're going to do this as like a legit product, if we're going to if we're gonna do this, which I'm not even sold that this is a great idea, but if we're going to do this, <laughs> let's get a fucking panel up there. Let's have them talking to all the cosplayers in advance. Let's f- have them figuring out what the fuck was going on when they made that costume. So at least what they can tell oh, you me know what been cool? is something semi-interesting. Remember the videos, um, and they happen at the majors, but specifically TI where it would be like backgrounds. Could you imagine like a even so we show all the we show all the cosplayers that were in the running to win and then the the three that won we have a 30 second background video of them talking about how they made their suit. Yeah. You know, that would be cool. I totally oh, yeah. I'd love to to hear from Tinker and be like this is how I was able to do the smoke and the cannons. This is how I was able to do the LEDs. Here's the battery that powers the suit. Here's Yeah, the, show the ball us thing. Yeah, like, show me the suit in action like that that at least would have been interesting instead of tinker lines like rearming and then he did it to you know he did a spin because yeah. tinker spins when he rearms I, and you like know, and if we are going to do the catwalk thing let's shorten the runway and let's not have a panel unless they're going to do that let's just have slacks up there yeah saying, give me badass, uh, right high five right badass. give me slacks yeah. yeah give me slacks being goofy out there bringing them out because that's what this whole thing is like it's not i'm sorry it's not very serious, and I, 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 and I know that maybe it's not supposed to be serious, and maybe Dota's not supposed to be serious, and yada, 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 but it just, at least for me, I know I was not but the target is, demographic. it is serious to them, um, and for good reason. They put a shitload of yeah, time into those. Yeah, well, and it's, it's, we talked about it before, you know, in the last show, where I, I, I probably am coming off way more negative about this thing on the second recording through than I was the first time, but... Um, I appreciate the one thing I appreciate as a Dota content creator is how welcoming the Dota scene is <clears> to all to other all, all other creation. ecosystems within right. Dota, mm-hmm. and I, and it's one of those things where like I, podcasting we don't get <laughs> any appreciation. Podcasting no, gets I'm a just, fair I'm appreciation. Just I, but, we have like, an awesome fan base and yeah. an awesome community. So, and, and so I, but like I, you know, and I, I, I don't want to like turn off any people who are into cosplaying. I don't want to turn off cosplayers themselves. I'm not trying to shit on that ecosystem in any capacity. It's it's amazing how welcoming the scene is, and that it, it what I most appreciated about it was that it was Toby Wan up there, it was Valve, it was PGL trying to embrace this this ancillary scene that has grown up around it and give it its moment in the spotlight. And I'm all about. And they that. did give him money, and and they were. I'm 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 guessing they're they're under the impression that it was successful. Um, I. I don't read Twitch chat, never have been well, interested in like a hive mind or anything like that. I don't really Twitch care chat about... is entertaining to watch for the one in five million comments that you happen to catch. That's kind I of don't funny. care about memeing. I don't care about the, f- I don't know what the faces mean except for uh, Kappa, Kappa because that guy is fun. It, like yeah. he just got a snapshot. Like I read into the whole story of where the Kappa face came from, but other than that, I don't know what the faces mean, nor do I care. So we full screened that every time, of course. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I mean, we wouldn't. Yeah, who gives? I, I'm sure there are people. But who I love wonder, Twitch I chat, wonder but... what the Twitch chat, uh, what the hive mind thought of the film I, co- or of the the I, cosplay contest. I, I mean, I went back, so I, I showed my girlfriend the next day uh, because she's now getting into Dota. We've been getting the ladies I in our lives into Dota. I could see her getting into cosplay. Yeah, well, I mean, she likes crafts and all that sort yeah, of. So you know, does, I mean, she so built, helped us with the tombstone, helped paint it, paint, paint that sucker up. And it looks um, good. Yeah, it looks really good. You know, and wishes that we had done a hundred things differently to make it last and do whatever. Well, she can have it and make it last and give it back to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I, <laughs> I was watching the Twitch chat and they it seemed overall positive. Twitch chat is is primarily about. Are you familiar with the concept of Schadenfreude? Is that like a follow the leader type thing? Like whoever says no, the first. Sh- Schadenfreude is taking satisfaction in the pain of others. Oh, 
no, I'm it's, not. It, it, so there, Twitch chat is always, there's always a schadenfreude element to what's going on within it. And maybe that kind of represents a weird cynicism that somehow develops with anonymity and yada, yada, yada. But uh, they they were overall positive with it. They were definitely, like, happy to see that Doom nearly trip over himself and die. Oh, um, man. You know, they, they, were, they were that kind of thing. But And people, you know, making fun of Slacks. Like, I, one comment I read as the Twitch chat was streaming by was, Oh, Slacks is doing his own cosplay. He's Snorlax. Oh, I was like, oh. You guys are just feeding Ouch. slacks, I hope you know. Yeah. He takes this criticism and it just and makes him bigger it. and better, <laughs> yeah. okay? Yeah. He right. will show up as Snorlax yeah. next time. Next yeah. time, you better like, watch the fuck out. For all you haters on slacks, like, he eats it. He takes your bad energy You're and turns it into it. positive energy. So, like, don't even waste your yeah. time, to be honest. If you want him to go away those people who do want it to go away don't say anything at all i think that's the only thing that's it that's the only way you get rid of him i'm sorry but he's gonna (laughs) be here yeah um i you know i love slacks Uh, Um, well it's hard not to love slacks and i'm with you like i think the i I think the opportunity was missed there that slacks could have made that really entertaining really enjoyable really or even maybe we may you know maybe toby stick to casting throw slacks up on the panel and let's see what Sl- I, I would love to I, i'd even love to see the exact same thing again with slacks on the panel trying to get those three to and talk. he would have got them laughing he would have got them saying things slacks would have been like that doom sucks huh and he yeah. would have said something yeah, like I, that I, yeah and then they and would where, have, or, or, and then they would have had to defend it or yeah or if slacks is not that guy where the fuck is that guy yeah. where's my roland sitting up on the panel going so that doom shit right and, like, and where, then everybody yeah, is you know like, what I mean? and then those three girls have to be like, no, no, that like, doom is wait, not. You don't shit. understand how things that, work. That or, doom is yeah. very detailed. Let me tell you how it works. Right. I, you, you know, that's the type of response you that's, want, and right? It's, yeah, and that's kind of, and you're right. Like that's probably the route to take is that comedic, semi-comedic, semi-sarcastic route. I think I don't feel like Toby was capable. I think of. Toby I think, took it a little hard when I said he wasn't my favorite caster, oh, and, and then he was like, was "You know really what? Impacting him right I'm there. just gonna go into cosplay <laughs> casting now. Yeah. Maybe he'll I'll be wow, his favorite dude. cosplay if caster. If you're responsible for this, yeah, shame, I know. Shame, shame on me, shame on me. <laughs> he is my favorite cosplay caster. <laughs> well, so far he's the only one. Uh, but you know, I'm with you. At the very least, I would I if we if we aren't nixing the panel, give me slacks. Give me somebody who's fucking funny up there. I, make it make it entertaining because we're right. all waiting. We're not. We're not right. I'm not. We're I'm not, sticking around for the grand finals. I, That's the only you know reason what? we're I guess watching. It, I'm not watching a Miss America contest. That's what it re- was yeah, reminiscent it of for me. Very it was, yeah, it was a. Uh, we're gonna judge them, and and we're gonna judge these people. And here's this panel. I I I don't know. That that's the biggest criticism I think yeah. it, that me I I mean speaking for Wazoo as well the biggest criticism that we had yeah, was because hands down the rest of P- everything that PGL did oh holy shit if PGL was just like one person yeah I would fucking high five so hard I <laughs> oh man like I, PGL just came in and made Shanghai look even worse than it did before dude yeah. <laughs> like PGL yeah. handled that <laughs> when shit. you yeah putting. Oh, uh, uh, I didn't even think about it, but like comparing, like it makes Shanghai look even more of a. Somebody disaster. needs to create a video of like the broadcasts of Shanghai running parallel to the broadcasts from Manila. Yeah, just straight through super sped, so we can see how much downtime there is over at Shanghai. Oh, you I know? know, and there was there was never a moment where I mean, Paul Schaliner, big shout out to Red Eye. I think he did an excellent job. Um, getting I, the panel. Going. I'll be honest with you, I don't think Red Eye plays much Dota at all. Um, but that just makes me more impressed by him Yeah, that he can, he never, he never makes those authoritative calls. He's never like, this is how a doom should be played. I don't care who the fuck you are. This is how doom should be played. He'll never make that type of comment. Well, and he knows enough backstory because you'd hear him say things like, well, we know that so-and-so reborn has has done this. Well, 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 yeah, we know that so-and-so really favors the tide hunter and you get the panel going, no, you can't have a tide hunter here. You gotta have, and then and he never made yeah. any remark that was like, "Wow, Red Eye, you're dumb." Like he would only make remarks to get people talking, and he was really good at interjecting without interrupting yeah. because he had to be the host. I mean, which was great, and he didn't talk about the porn that he was watching in the Philippines, which was good, um, and he didn't yeah. uh, say cunt. 
which that's also good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm all right with a, with an Australian guy saying cunt, all right? I'm a Jim Jeffries fan. So. Is t- it was too good Australian? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I was making too good. I was making too good references. I was making right. too Paul, Paul Schellner is Brit- British. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, but the Brits like I mean, even too. compare the hosts. Like, compare the hosts yeah. of Shanghai to Manila. Compare the... Uh, yeah. Compare... Man, like, man, man, you're right. You're it right. was just such a Manila huge was improvement. so much fucking better. And I we watched more of it because of it. Oh, I yeah. I mean, I I, consumed, I knew every series. I didn't. Maybe yeah. I didn't watch every series, but I, I it, knew the results. It was of tough every to series. watch every series because of the time difference for us. I mean, I would I, like one night. Oh, here's how weird the time difference is, and how early my fucking day starts. I went home that asleep, fucking yeah. night. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I fell asleep watching. I think it was a, a, one of the Navi series on like day one or day two, and then I woke up. And, and I, it's still it going. was still fucking going because I was watching on the Twitch app on my Xbox. Yeah, and woke up and there it was, like still fucking going at six thirty in the goddamn morning. And that was how I started my day was yeah. catching the tail end of a uh, of one of the final matches of the and, day. And that's, know? I mean, that's really cool. I can't believe Kindle does not have a Twitch app. If if there is a way to get mm. Twitch on my Kindle, please let me know because I which is super odd because they're owned by Amazon. I know. Um, which I so I went. You into, gotta be wrong. I, no, that. I went into the Kindle App Store because I every fucking device. So my wife and I both have like the new Kindles. Um, they're very similar to iPads. I never noticed a difference. Like really, I until I couldn't get Twitch, and then Twitch wasn't really optimized to be used like through a browser on my Kindle. I couldn't make it full screen. So it was really painful. I had to watch the games on the Kindle when I like before bed because I'm watching shit on the Kindle before I go to sleep. I had to watch them with the Twitch chat, which was just an annoyance. Just like I didn't even read it, but just seeing like things like scrolling at like a thousand times speed, like. Oh wow! It looks like uh yeah, it looks like at one point it was removed uh, because of a compatibility issue. Yeah, I, I couldn't find it. I mean, maybe there is a way to get... Because it says huh. there's an Android app for it, and I think Kindle is Android. Um, yeah. But I couldn't get a Twitch Twitch app for it, but whatever. I still watched it via yeah. the Silk browser. They have Silk, is what it's called for Amazon, for sure. uh, Kindle. Cool. And I had to have it... I couldn't full screen it. Oh. So I had to have like a little teeny screen with the Twitch chat. And it, it, Sorry, it, I watched it on my phone at work in the morning. I mean, it sucked, but... Uh, I, I mean, I still watched the game and still got the minutia of the game. Top, PGL, once again, with the, the rune, top rune, bottom rune, with the, the, with the tri- three lanes. Yeah, the, all three lanes that... I mean, I, there's just the, not enough good to say. The mid-camera that popped up with the Roche pit when any time somebody was or hovering the, around the, it. the creep stack status. Um, yeah. That was really cool. Like, every little <clears throat> thing that they add, like, I just, I cannot give enough praise to PGL... I'm excited. We broke. It was thir- a spectacle. It made me. It, it made me happy to because uh, in previous uh, majors, uh, which are the primary tournaments I've watched. Like I said, I, uh, the majority of my Dota pro Dota watching is going to be the majors and the occasional like ESL, DreamHack, whatever. Well, and Summit. I mean, but Summit's a different. Yeah, Summit is summit. like highly the entertaining su- yeah. the entire time. Right. The Summit's a little bit different, and you, you, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because uh, before, I guess before the majors, it was the Summit that we were watching. Well, when it, we watched anything. Oh, I remember the first commercial for the Summit one, and I was like, wow, that looks cool. And it's like over $60,000 prize but pool, and now it's like... All that aside, yeah. uh, props to everybody else who runs a good tournament, but we got to talk about PGL in Manila. Um it, it, it for the first time ever, I wasn't like incentivized to go watch in client. Oh yeah, I wanted to watch because, the stream. Yeah, normally I normally I'd watch in the client just because every once in a while you want to click on a hero and see their item, or yeah, every once in a while you want to go see like what I want. Maybe I, I want to see last hits instead of net worth. They right. were good about that. They they showed last hits up until like ten minutes well, or it, so, which is what I needed. That, you were starting to get really cool features. Like I, I appreciated that like team battle layout that they had. Oh yeah, where it would show I, health bars and how much health and how much I mana. I could have done had. without the players like actual faces. I'll be honest. Because I, it's I not that interesting to watch. They did that with StarCraft a lot. So yeah. in StarCraft, it was every single time you would see them. And it's just, you know, blank faces is all it is. They're like expressionless faces, basically. Yeah. Especially in StarCraft. There's a lot more expression. It was really funny to see OG when they won and like crit 
screaming on his camera. I don't know if you saw oh, this. Because I'm and never. Then, and then that's no-tale, not where my attention is. And then Notail go. like hitting the desk three times and like yeah, <laughs> and just like bam, bam, bam. Fuck yeah, yeah see, we just my, won. My like that simpleton was cool. brain only watches the combat go down. Like I mean, that's well, it. no, this was this is stuff that was like on Reddit and like ancillary content. Maybe you could have seen it in those sure. battle views, but like when the GG was called and it was all over, like the way Notail was like. Fuck yeah, I just won my second major, and he just, like, you know, just, like, hits on the desk because he's just, like, doesn't know what else to do with yeah. himself at that moment because <laughs> yeah. he's so filled with glee. Like, then there was this Reddit thread that was it was so funny. It just had pictures of, of no-tail all over it, and it was, like, I'm, like, he's, like, I'm not, I don't mean to be homosexual or anything, but no-tail, you're perfect. I lo- you're you're perfect and I love you and then it's just just like this like infographic of no tail and like different pictures of him and like him on a unicorn and stuff like that like they're just like an ultimate fan of no tail and I mean I still have team no tail um I'm there just like last year when I was saying secret um I'm saying OG I'm I I love OG I know I said I bleed DC and I would have been so happy to see DC win um DC is they just like uh moon meander said uh the two teams that didn't chain that didn't roster shuffle were the two teams that were the top two yeah um i feel I, like i don't think we're gonna see a roster shuffle out of dc again I, you don't now no you don't I think Owie would go back mm, no i don't i think Owie will probably go on to secret or something like that i mean Owie's always a good player um no i i know but like that I mean, being said, Owie's going to go on to a different team. I don't think. I don't. Even, I don't know. I. I. I don't think you should rule out Owie going back to DC. He's got the connections there. He's I, got. And not I to think mention, he'd get in the way of misery. I, I. I think he'd get in the way of misery. Misery's a good captain. I don't know about that. I. He was the so the previous captain's going to join under a new captain. Yeah. I. I. I don't think. I. I. You know. Hey. He wasn't captaining eg you know and, what I and mean? i don't know how dc does it but can they afford like two awesome players like two on paper awesome players like misery and, you know, and i have no idea that well, I mean, we'll never know and yeah. i don't know how it worked like yeah, none of we'll us do there's that. no transparency there so like can they afford you know to have uh, it would be interesting to see but yeah you might be right i mean maybe it's just financially not in the cards but we we would have no fucking idea no we wouldn't um that being said uh i i i hope to see i hope to see more come out of dc Oh, me too. Uh, I, I, and I think you. I think you will. I. I hope I think to see more come out right. of complexity. Like uh, I think they need time to form a team and complexity remain stable. Is going complexity is only getting better. Um, I can't wait for complexity to, to become the new EG, um, which I think can easily very well. Easily now new happen. EG is the old EG. No, I, I mean, I mean the new <laughs> like the North American yeah. Pride team, like, and they really are all North American, aren't they? I, I know that Swindles and his brother is. Man, so whatever. So fucking you get so fucking hung up on the most ridiculous shit. <laughs> I just want like an all North American like uh-huh, yeah. a team to root for. You know. Sure. Sure. That's Everybody it. must. In order for you to be a North American team, Roland will require that you show him birth personally. Certificates. Well, birth certificates. birth certificates and or residency cards would be acceptable. Residency's fine. Yeah, residency will be acceptable. Uh, but we need five years plus on residency. You, uh, yeah. you need to uh, of course. I'm sorry. I forgot, I forgot of the uni- that stipulation. Of North America, whether that's Canada, Mexico, yeah. uh, United States, yeah, whatever. Hey, those will all work for Roland. You just roll on up here, show him the ID card, and we'll we'll get the book started for you. And, then I, and I won't run for president two years later yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or four years later whatever anyway uh, we are well over time oh, okay, uh, once again just pgl fuck yeah i hope if anybody from your organization is listening please go tell your boss that they did a great job and then have him tell his boss that they did a great job until we get to the top and that guy whoever and then tell that guy to come on the show uh or whatever i mean i if they came on the show it'd just be a gush fest i couldn't be on the show yeah because i'd be like you guys are perfect why doesn't valve just hire you for every event you did a great job do we know who's doing ti i i don't know i does valve technically do ti themselves well i think so well i know that from uh people that i know that work at valve um they all get that day to work at key arena Oh yeah, that's right. So they, they the, so they, yeah. so the whole staff of uh, basically Valve just Valve shuts down for those, you know, yeah. like seven days and and go and heads over to Key Arena. And... Okay, I'm closing us out. Okay. We're gonna do it. Uh, if you guys want to find us, we are at defenseofthepatients.com. <laughs> Defenseofthepatients at gmail.com is where you can send all of your hate mail, love mail 
questions, comments, concerns. Call 1-88-410-7150 and leave us a voicemail. We have a voicemail that we haven't put up yet, but we're getting the studio back and it's almost fully back to its old days of glory. And then we'll start running that that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitter at dot p underscore show. We're on Facebook. We're on all the social media. You can search for us, find us, like us, put us in your circle, your ring, your whatever it is. Uh, and of course, uh, check out our subreddit, Jay Gushi. I want to give him a shout out. He's the man. Uh, he runs, maintains that thing, posts about it, probably is uh, deleting all the hate threads about how late the show is as we speak. Yeah, and, and, and deleting them in spaghetti text yeah. as well, because he is our resident <laughs> memer as yes. well. Uh, yes, he His is. His memes are, are dank. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash dot PTV whenever we're doing that. If you want to support the show, head over to Defense of the pa- or head over to Patreon.com forward slash Defense of the Patients. It's where you can donate and help out. Uh, just whatever you can. There are little rewards, prizes, and we have some or, uh, cool stretch goals. I'm just going to throw my routing number and account number on here, and, and you can <laughs> just, just go ahead and direct deposit. deposit. Uh, <laughs> the other way that you can help us without spending any extra money is by going to defenseofthepatients.com, clicking on the Amazon banner, bookmarking it, and using that anytime you need to buy something on Amazon. We get a cut of it. They don't charge you any extra. They just say, hey, oh, Doc, you get free Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah, and there's some free Amazon Prime offers associated with it as well. We know that there are some issues with the UK Well, it's just other Canada, countries. Yeah. It's, it's only a U.S. Amazon. Um, to the gentleman who sent us the email asking about getting a U.K. banner up there, we are working on that. We're trying to figure out the logistics or how we, well, how we, we do it. We, so our big audiences are obviously Europe, America, uh, Australia. Australia, and uh, South Canada. America, and Canada. And uh, South Africa. The top four are Canada, U.S., Europe as a whole, because it's way too complicated to get into yeah. the massive countries that's there, yeah. and then Australia. So, mm-hmm. I yeah, we're we're working on getting the proper Amazon links for all of those. It's something we just hadn't considered. Yeah, but we should because it's a global economy. Exactly, and it's uh, we're we're global citizens. But, um, you know. Final quick shout out, non dot p related. Through the Aether Lens is a show that a couple of guildies have started up. Uh, oh really? Yeah, you know, it's a podcast that they've got going. I think Hakun and uh, a va- uh, 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 a Vanderish or Computer something. Computer Heat. I one? think it was Computer Heat at one point. I know that his name is like Ivan. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I I, I just barely. Ivan Drish. Uh, but yeah, they they uh, said they were looking to get a podcast going, and they decided they wanted to talk about Dota as well. The um, first episode of Through the Aether Lens was with uh, a female, and she had uh, Matt Demers on. So I don't know how they if if it's just like a coincidence on name. I, ha- I haven't or... had a chance to listen to it yet, um, but I you know I'm gonna definitely give it a go and, and yeah, see what the competition's like. You know, it's it's not competition. Well, it's support. You know, I, I say that I content. say that jokingly. Oh, yeah. It's like. Ain't nobody can compete with us. We're like the Walmart of podcasts for (laughs) Dota 2. Oh, my God. (laughs) Our prices are cheap. And you get pretty shitty stuff, too. Because most of our podcasts are produced in China. (laughs) Let's be honest. You know. uh, Uh, There's not much made in the U.S. here at .p. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You can tell. Just take a look at our Rollins. Written on the back of his neck says made in China. Yeah. Oh, uh, they could have done a better job. That's why he falls apart so easy. They could have done you know? a better job manufacturing well, me. I, you definitely don't stay on point. You know, I, I, there's definitely a flaw there. All right, but, close hey, us out can. before I die of boredom. All right, until next time. This is Cyphus for Roland saying good luck. Good luck.